back. You got our studio. You got us live. Live. Woo. Wow. <laughs> you know, I, I think that opening title sequence works just, it just works all day long. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. we, we have a great show today. I know we do. We have a really great show for you today out there in Cyberland. Mm-hmm. All you boys and girls, we have Melissa Roth, who is one of the first e-guiders on the site. We work together at HBO on the show John from Cincinnati. She is live in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> we have we have Brian Rothy here driving. How you yeah, doing? I'm driving, driving from the uh, the rooftop here. Yeah. Of the Egotter Studio. God, it looks like a beautiful day. <laughs> you know, it's it's so nice out. Even it's not even that smoggy. It's such a. It, we live in a beautiful city. Yeah. We really do live in a beautiful city. It is nice here. The weather is beautiful. Mm, a beautiful. <laughs> every day. Every day. <laughs> every day. Do you ever get sick of it? The sun. No, because it's never different. It's never different. No. It's never different. I never could see that. It's never <laughs> a little different. foreshadowing of things to come, huh, Mark? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. A little foreshadowing. Yeah. Well, look, let's get the show started. We'll get the uh, the it. open going, and uh, we'll come back, and we'll we'll get the party started. Let's do it! Get our, you got us live on. <laughs> That's a beautiful opening. Isn't that pretty? Mm. Mm. Graphics. Huh? Ooh, episode three. We made it three episodes. All right, all right. So, welcome to Egotters Live. I want to first thank our sponsors, our wonderful sponsors. Can't forget them. Blue Microphone. Thanks for making us sound Blue. so good. Mm-hmm. And making us look mm-hmm. like <laughs> Blue. <50s> pips. <laughs> thank you, Blue. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'd like to thank Wirecast. I'd like to thank Livestream and Big Gravity. Uh, if you are watching us now, you could click on any of those links and check out it, more information at your leisure. Sure, and sign into the chat below while you're at it. Hey, sign into that chat. This is Egot is Live, and we'd love to hear from you and uh, join the conversation. Oh, yeah. Um, so uh, why don't we start introduce our, 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 our guest, yeah, our featured we guest should. here. Hi. Hi. Oh, well, I didn't see you there. Hey. <laughs> here I am. I'm learning to get very close to the microphone. Mm, uh, yes. Yes. Wow, it's it's nice to see you here in the studio. It's exciting to be here. It's so gorgeous. Yeah, Melissa Roth, e-guider, author, journalist, inaugural e-guider, one of the original e-guiders, curator, media, curator, media maven, uh-huh. digital digital enthusiast, A digital enthusiast. <laughs> Is that what I am? Sure. Why not? Okay. Taste maker. Taste thought leader. Oh, right, the thought leader. I lead a lot of thoughts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Trendsetter. Sure. Um, Left lefty southpaw. Uh huh. Oh yeah. We're gonna get to that. Uh huh. We're gonna get to that. I think the first thing we should talk about though is how we met. Like how, how does how does you know how do we how does get, a person become an e guide? How do we world? know? We, yeah. Like how? Yeah. Do, well, we first met at HBO. That's right. I was working on the show John from Cincinnati, and uh, we were creating all kinds of what would you call it? Uh, I like to call it the the pioneering you? internet adventure that began. On the pioneer set of Deadwood. Yeah. And, you know, I think John from Cincinnati really, as the next form of that, I guess they call it transmedia now, where it's oh, this yeah. organic extension of the show that lives online, on air, on diff- multi pl- yeah. multi platform programming. It leaps out of the screen and into the ether in many different planes and dimensions. Exactly. And uh, that's how we met. We were doing one of the first kind of shows like that that were experimenting with this you were uh, the embedded man i was embedded throughout the entire first season so i was there from pre-production through post right um it wasn't just like hey i flew in uh you know marketing sent me in there for a week to to get some stuff i mean i was hey uh, hey hey working <laughs> not in, hey you know <laughs> nothing um, the, wrong hbo marketing among H- the best in the world in the in the whole wide world in the in the global <laughs> wide world <laughs> let's say galaxy it, let's you know galaxy. what? Let's stop. Strike it. Okay. Universe. In the worldwide universe galaxy. Web. Web. Forever oh. and throughout the universe. Right. So I was one of the first people to work with marketing, work with the new media department, right. work with production, bringing it all together into one enormous you know, package that consisted of YouTube <laughs> videos, websites, 
um, stuff that was making it on air. I was had credits in the actual show. That's right. Um, this was all during pre-strike, right before we striked, and right, right the, before HBO went through a metamorphosis of sorts. Yes, during the the yeah. shooting of that show, Chris right. Albrecht, the head left, uh-huh. the head of New Media left. Uh, Pretty much all all the bosses. And yeah. when the show aired, John from Cincinnati, it aired. Um, the lead-in was. The Sopranos, and that was the a very famous. Of the Sopranos. That was a very famous finale for the Great Blackout. Right, everyone had their finale party, which I had as a joint John from Cincinnati, you know, launch, launch party. Right, and all anybody could do was get on the phone and call their friends and say, "Did did, did your cable go out too? Did your cable go, the the yeah. blackout? It was the, the blackout great. of 2007." Mm-hmm. And, and what's interesting enough, all the people out there in Webland, uh, you know, I know we're we're talking about how we met and John from Cincinnati, but you don't understand the frustration of a year like thinking this we're leading into. You oh know, yeah, this is going to be the this, biggest thing since Lost. This is going to be huge. It's going to be David Milch and HBO the lead in after The Sopranos. Oh yeah. We were going to be bigger than The Sopranos, damn it. Yeah, and yeah. then and then all of a sudden, number one, <laughs> we had the great blackout where you could actually hear the televisions across the, the country shutting off and people screaming in rage. Canceling, then, yeah. Canceling and then rage, comes yeah. out this kind yeah. of retro-futuristic LSD trip show right? that really it was right. way more eclectic than I think people were anticipating. Well, yeah, and it was not... The, for people expecting a Sopranos John from Cincinnati replacement. they did not get that John from Cincinnati is about an alien surfer or a stranger that comes to town right. in Imperial Beach and changes the lives of this surf family right and but it's really more about themes uh, ideas of redemption uh, with religious or spiritual overtones about right. how we're we're all not too far from being saved that no matter how far gone we are we could always redeem ourselves and how we could redeem ourselves as a species and right. uh, we actually have a clip of uh, some of the behind the scenes of David during the finale um, final episode the final episode 10 <laughs> uh, explaining um, just a little bit about a little rah-rah speech before the the finale uh, episode and and uh, then we'll cut to a Where show. there was no script right a script who needed a script we didn't have a script all season didn't we, we had ideas so you want to check that out yeah let's check it out and uh, we'll come back and we'll talk about it okay right. cool Exciting. awesome here's the thing you know like if you fucked up unremittingly for decades uh, <laughs> and you wake up and you say to yourself how the fuck am I still alive you know don't they come and collect and collect the license at a certain point that's what the universe gives us every morning no matter how far we have veered from uh, reverence for the miraculous fact that we exist in a universe that we don't understand. Until we stop getting the dawn, we get a chance to start over. Uh, The first episode was a starting over, and we have become so jaded and, and Uh, so addicted to wanting to be told what we are going to feel that there's a certain withdrawal that one has to be willing to ask the audience to go through. Please know uh, that that, uh, I've never been prouder or more grateful uh, for the collective efforts of so many people, nor have I ever seen a a more heartwarming result. So uh, we're kicking ass and, and this is going to be the culmination uh, of it, and, and uh, everything's going to go fine. Now, having said that, there is no fucking script. <laughs> uh, but other than that, uh, so so that was David Milch in in rare classic form. That's uh, pure milch, unadulterated milch, uh, no pages, um, lots of energy, lots of inspiration, and uh, lots of creativity in the air. Um, from these shows that we were we worked on together, we were putting together. Uh, Melissa, wouldn't you say you? What role did you have? You were more on the HBO side. Yeah, I was. I was kind of in the. Uh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I was in house. 
kind of in the in the more uh, quiet <laughs> um, uh, role of uh, kind of taking these sort of big ideas that we had and trying to sort of translate them into an actual uh, universe. Yeah. And, and the idea was that it was going to be very interactive. We we had close to a thousand assets. We had um, your entire documentary series that was yeah. sort of a family of man um, that that was looking at the real people of Imperial yeah. Beach, including uh, as well as the characters from the yeah. show. We had YouTube videos too. Oh, we had YouTube. Behind um, the scenes, all these behind the scenes stuff. And right. then we created these uh, websites. And within the websites, there were the, their own assets. Right. And we made these experimental art videos, basically, that went along every episode of John from Cincinnati. We would go with a theme right. of what what is the theme that week. And uh, for, fi- for the episode 10, for the finale, we went with the theme of art. And uh, this, this video was then to use to help inspire others to create their own video pieces in this interactive web universe that we created. It was pretty elaborate. It was like helping people create their own little um, avid uh, video creation where they could right. take photos and video and, and audio and quotes and then cook up their own uh, creation. And basically it was, the idea was it was a, a big pipeline into right. the uh, beyond. And since the show was about redemption, we felt that by having people create something, that's how they could redeem Right. Redeem them. You, you 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 humanize the internet. Right. David Mills was really into how do you humanize the internet, and you humanize it by being creative. And and, and yeah, and creating and, and connecting with other people through right. that, you could sort of post your message, and it would connect to other people. There was yeah. sort of a big, um, a big community of people that threaded together, and then it really did go into the next dimension. You could sort of see it getting smaller and smaller out yeah. into the universe. And, uh, you know, one day hopefully there'll be a, a retrospect of all this stuff we did online because it, it was pretty interesting. And, yeah. and we're going to queue up now. We're going to show uh, Node 10. This is the 10th out of 10 Node short uh, experimental art videos that we made um, on John from Cincinnati. Okay, I'm excited to see this. Good the pipeline is part of the story. Art is connection. Art lines up my mind with my heart, with my spirituality. Art is life. It's something that you create. It's something that you put your spirit, your emotion, your love in something. I enjoy just looking at the blades of grass. I enjoy staring at trees and birds flying through the sky. And there's a certain touch that most people don't see, and that's beyond what you see. We are energy, pure, beautiful energy. Music is the most powerful thing in the world. I think art is omnipresent in our lives. Anything can be art. Someone's accent when they talk it can be the way someone walks. It can be how someone surfs. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> I take good pride in how I dance. Makes me feel good. Puts a tear in my eye. Makes me know that I'm doing the right thing. Music of drums has been around since the beginning of time. And this drum circle is a beautiful fellowship of people that believe in music, people that believe in love, people that believe in life. The end is near. Wow, that was that was some artsy, crazy stuff there, man. That was... Uh, Straight out of the 60s, I think. Um, you know, talking about being on the uh, right side of the brain, being a right side brain person and living in, in a, a right-handed world, can you tell me a little bit about a book that you wrote? You're not only a journalist, but you're an author, and I'd love to hear about uh, The Left Stuff. All right. <clears throat> Wrong. Left. The Left Stuff. <clears throat> this is a book about... Um, uh, South Paws, basically. And it's kind of a, a look at the an evolutionary uh, take on why they survived, why this stubborn minority, which has existed throughout the history of uh, humanity, has, uh, has kind of not only survived, but th- pretty much, you know, thrived. We now have uh, seven, I'm sorry, five of the last seven presidents have been left-handed. Barack uh, being one of them? Barack is one of them. And, uh, lefties. I know. In every single way. I think all three of us are lefties, right? I'm not. <laughs> Shh, pipe down. Sorry. <laughs> what What have you found interesting about living in a right-handed world, being a left-handed person? 
Um, <laughs> well, it's actually, you know, I mean, I was, you know, a 70s child where that was, you came of age with uh, drawing from the right side of the brain and everybody was trying to encourage their kids to be more creative. And uh, I was given, I was the only lefty in my family, Oof. that visible lefty. Visible lefty. There's a lot of secret lefties out there. That's what you learn. Yeah. Covert lefties, closeted lefties, whatever you want to call them. They don't know that they're left-handed, a lot of them. Really? You have to put them in the brain scan to fully really? fully tell whether or not they're left-handed. They are usually they usually have siblings or parents or some what indicator. In, so what inspired you to, to write the book? Was there a catalyst? Was there something that said, I need to get this out? You know, it started as an article for... Um, John Kennedy Jr.'s magazine. He was a lefty. He was into it. He had um, George George magazine. Um, he had the left-handed keyboard, and you know he had met with Bill Gates and interviewed him. And Bill Gates has the all, you know he makes left-handed, right-handed everything. Oh, that's nice. He's a lefty, Bill Gates, <clears throat> yeah. who likes to switch it up every now and then just to challenge himself. Yeah, good. But um, so he got all the left-handed paraphernalia, and and sure enough, throughout history, he's a big history buff. You know, a lot of military leaders have been left-handed at times when it was verboten to be left-handed. And what is the ratio in population? Do you do you have a sense? Yeah, the current ratio is actually much higher than people think. It's up to like fifteen percent in <sighs> Western culture. Fifteen percent. It's really high. <laughs> yeah. We got to. <laughs> wow. We're, we're creeping up on everybody. Yeah. That's good. Well, it's just a lot more tolerated. and So I'll tell you what they did to my mom, who's left-handed, who's oh, now yeah. uh, ambidextrous. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. She was full-on left-handed, and she lived in uh, northern, uh, north New York. Upstate, Upstate. they call it. Yes. I know. God, I'm, I'm really becoming Jeez, West Coast. northern New York. North. <laughs> Error the technical. Bronx. That's bad. Yeah. Well, let's here. just cut the broadcast. <laughs> just cut the broadcast. Uh, this is rough. I can't take it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a rough show. Uh, so... She lived in Lockport, and they tied her hand to the desk, her left hand to the desk, so she could not actually write. And that wasn't even nuns. That was just That public was public school. school. Yeah. That's, public school. That was a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, they felt pretty strongly about it because they thought... Because you were a freak or mutant? What, I mean, what was well, it? Well, they thought it was... Um, they thought psychologically that the kids were um, not falling in line, that it was a sign of, of um, kind of a you know disruptive personality that had to be... A maverick? A maverick, John we, McCain's lefty. Is he? We don't we don't like them free thinkers. No, those. Yeah, I mean, think about it. You're a little kid, and everyone else is being taught something, and you have the audacity to kind of how dare you teach yourself the how other way? How dare you be left-handed? And and a, and a little girl. I mean, a little girl. Little girls oh, are very conformity delicate. oriented. Yeah. They wish they could do it with their right hand. They try. They she probably tried and tried and tried, and she's probably sneaking it. Thank God I went to a high school of performing arts. They were like, yeah, yes. go. Bring it on. Bring on the left. Let's see your left foot. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Show it. I'm not sure which foot is bigger. Uh, is it usually, the, if you're left-handed, do they know which foot? Uh, it's, um, it, you're probably more likely to be left-footed, but... Um, I am left-footed. Are you? And left-handed. Uh-huh. I'm full on I, left. I, can, yeah, I think I could tell you were lefty before I ever saw yeah. you pick anything up. I think you sneered or you did the, the cocked brow thing. Mm. I can I can usually spot them. My mom says I'm a triple Taurus too. I don't know what that means, but I'm a triple Taurus. Wow, I bullish mean, on every yeah. front. Yeah, and uh, of course my grandfather would just say it's a billion dollar industry. What does that mean? I don't know. There's all made up that whole Taurus thing. It's, it's uh, a billion dollar uh, industry. It's a billion dollar oh, industry. Oh right. Well, so is this lefty stuff. Now moving, you know. I, I could talk about being left-handed all day because my whole life I grew up being left-handed. Stop gesturing with your right hand. Well, look, I'm controlling. I'm <laughs> okay. doing all the technical all right, support. Good. I'm all actually right. trying to tweet. As, okay, good. As That's speak. good. That's what I like to see. I'm tweeting with my left side. Okay. I'm talking with my right. That's good. I'm actually controlling the cameras with my foot on with a pedal switcher. That's what, with no, your left. No, that's not true, Brian Rothy. With your left toes. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope so. Um, I want to talk now about. You know some of your video favorites. You've been an e-guider yeah. from the very beginning. Right. I'd say how many videos do you have in in the like, 50, 25? In the yeah, uh, like so over a hundred. That's pretty incredible. Since could, the beginning, yeah. Can I get a high five for that? Oh yeah. Nice. Whew. That was your left hand, my right hand. Okay, that's yeah, okay. That's okay. Five. Yeah. That's okay. How are you feeling? Relaxed? Are you, are you, are you getting, getting warmed up? Getting a little up? more used to this. It's just kind of uh -huh. strange. It's like someone's looking at me really uh -huh. close. Yeah. Got a head whole, and shoulders and everything. You know we have worldwide distribution on this. Oh, right. Well, there's that too. <laughs> we queued up one of your um, 
Oh, one of your picks. Which one? Um, the robot uh, hmm. manufacturer, the 3D printer. Okay, now this one was kind of a find that I'm well. On a couple levels, this was a find, and that <clears throat> one, it was a find to to get to this web series because I was digging, digging, digging that day, and it wasn't something that was on anybody's radar. Um, and what it is is a series of mini documentaries on uh, Babel gum, um, but within this series of documentaries that I, I think it's a radar is the team behind it they have found all of these incredible um, people doing interesting things. And, and this one in particular, uh, do you want to cue it up? It's the kind of thing you kind of need a video to really get your head around it. You could read an article about it, someone could tell you about it, and you'd sort of be like, what are you talking about? I don't really get what you mean. Right. Th this is a pretty heady subject, too. So you want to play it? Um, yeah, I hit play. Let's see if it actually works. This is called Raider 19 MakerBot. You remember having to go to the store? Yeah, back in those days. I love knowing that that future is, is tangible now. It's not just a dream. That's that crazy. Gets me really excited. MakerBot is a affordable, open source 3D printer. Basically what that means is you can take anything you can imagine and turn it into something physical. The way it works is you take a filament of plastic, ABS plastic, and it goes into the machine and it gets melted and it comes out of nozzle and it puts down a layer and then it puts down another layer and slowly, layer by layer, builds up the object. MakerBot grew out of NYC Resistor. NYC Resistor is this really great place. It's a hacker space, and it's a clubhouse for about 25 of us geeks. And we gather to learn, share, and make things. We're into electronics, programming, and the cool thing is that we have resources there to be able to make pretty much anything we can imagine. So when we started, we did all of our development and thinking at NYC Resistor, and that was kind of our laboratory for that time. I had to have one the second I heard about it because uh, the ability to print your own 3D objects, like whatever you want, was just uh, way too enticing to pass up. This is really lofty, it might sound ridiculous, but I'm working on the Lunar X Prize, <laughs> which is a contest for building a rover, sending it to the moon. Um, and this is perfect because I can prototype custom little parts. Um, they're lightweight, strong, and you know, would survive in harsh conditions. You can make all sorts of things with the MakerBot. You could make an iPod dock, you could make a clamp for your bike to put a light on. If you want a, a wrench, you can, you can download a wrench and print it out. If you want eyeglasses and you want to make them a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, yeah, no problem. All these small necessities that you don't even realize that are made out of plastic in your life, suddenly you have instant access to. And that for me is, is the, the real light bulb moment. One of the wonderful things about MakerBot is we also have this website called Thingiverse, which is a place for people to gather and share their designs for physical objects. Uh, there's all sorts of designs up there, and the people have been really creative. And that is amazing because now the design work has multiplied. And that's kind of the beautiful nature of most digital media is that it only needs to be created once, and then it can be duplicated a hundred times, a thousand times, a million times. And pretty soon there's going to be digital designs for, if not everything you want, a lot of things that you might want. And you'll be able to just download them, you can modify it, print it out, and have it be just the way you want it. I got a miniature version of the MakerBot printed out by a MakerBot. When we started selling them, we really thought like, okay, this is going to be you know, a way for America to get back into industry, back into manufacturing, and really bring it to the living rooms of people. And we found it makes a community of people because they share it with their friends, they make it with their friends, they make things. All right, all right. That was. With their friends, and next well, thing you know, this we'll keep it going, right? I think we have another minute left to that. Itself, seating itself all over. All right, we're back. We're back.
That, we got we got the point of that. That was the very end. It just ended just now. You can find it. Up. But you know that is nominated, as you said, for a streaming. What do you the know? The whole, cat? <clears throat> the whole series is nominated. I think under um, <clears throat> documentary series. Sorry, I'm allergic to something here. Um, <laughs> the whole um, could be the. In- are you allergic to the internet? I'm I allergic know. to the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting there. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> You're doing great. I'm doing great. Uh, yeah, no, it was nominated for I think under nonfiction series, mm-hmm. um, and which has some stiff yeah. competition. It is great that you know there's content like this out there. Like you would not find this on television. You couldn't find this obviously in the movies. I mean, these short form documentaries. I feel like the internet's kind of reinvigorated. You know, revived the short form. Right, and even like you know the long tail of subjects and and intrigue that you can find out there that you never would have found, and you know the journalist in me is so excited about it because like this is a find. Where did they get these people? Totally, and, where and it's beautifully been shot. Yeah. The, the sound is great. I mean, yeah. it's done. I mean, you could tell filmmakers made this with a vision and a passion. There's right. there's a look to it. There's everything is right. You know, right, and they're finally you know shining a light on something that's sort of you know it's not a celebrity you know right car wreck or something but it's fascinating it's it's sort of the future but it's not quite ready for prime time news or anything right like that. right uh, does babble gum uh, say what views i wonder what the views account is i think Babelgum. it's babel gum babel gum they pronounce it yeah it's just it's that's a terrible <laughs> <laughs> it's you know italian uh, hey grazie grazie prego babel gum. i know i'm from upstate new york so we try not to Belize. flatten our a's it's like babel gum babel gum it's babel gum babel gum babel gum <laughs> shorten those syllables yeah seriously it's a, nice, <laughs> it's a nice logo though and when we were talking about earlier about the stuff we were doing for john from cincinnati it feels like that's come a long way as well you were mentioning something about you saw an ad uh, a billboard yeah well now the networks and the studios well they're all in on it they all have digital studios and they're all creating web series Mm -hmm. and they are now putting a lot of money and talent behind it and Mm -hmm. uh, one of the web series had the billboard in Hollywood and Highland where the Oscars take place the Mm -hmm. Times Square of Hollywood had had a billboard for a web series launch really Um, do you remember what it was it was shoot Uh, it was here's the problem they do rollouts and launches as if they're feature films so you can't right. access them when you want to access them right and uh what network was it for i think this was a paramount digital it it was i think it was called um as, uh, it's it's on e-guiders it's something eight um circle of eight circle of eight there yes, you go circle of eight ding, ding, ding. check it out on e-guiders billboard worthy and others have taken out you know it's uh, worthy of a crackles network. put out uh, yeah. Tons of stuff. Crackle's taken out some major spots. Um, NBC will actually do a promo spot for their viral video creation. Very aggressive with their stuff. Very. They're very good. NBC yeah. is very aggressive with uh, web series. Some people video. may say they should be focusing more on their actual TV programming <laughs> than their web content. Well, no, I would argue that their web series and viral videos have helped drive more uh-huh. viewers to their content. Definitely right, the, the digital case for shorts. The well, I would say, you know, one of the things that's up that's probably going to win is Subtle Sexuality, which is the music video that they did for The Office. And that mm-hmm. is uh, yep. Mindy Kaling, the woman who plays Kelly, delusional Kelly, crazy right. Kelly. And, uh, you know, they got Ed Helms, who a lot of people who don't watch The Office would know Ed Helms from The Hangover or The right. Daily Show. Right. He's a funny guy and he's got a huge following. So they see him in this music video in this strange office right. situation setting. What is that? Well, and it's just funny, yeah. and it's very, uh, everybody's out of context. Everyone's doing something a little bit unexpected. You've got BJ Novak right. grabbing his crotch and doing all this sort of... Uh, that sells. That rap- sells. Come on. Seriously. BJ Novak grabbing his crotch. And um, they're kind of rapping, and then they're kind of, you know, it's, it's a music video. You know, <clears throat> it's like marketing becomes content. The content is the marketing. Yes. And it's And it's not so much like doing some overt sell to you, but it's, you know really speaking to the media savvy consumer that's getting content from everywhere they're saturated right and how do we how do we deliver people entertainment in a new kind of authentic organic way and this is the new way don't you think yeah and trying to be you know push the envelope a little bit um kind of take things out of their usual context it's not just a promo this isn't something you're going to expect to see so how do you keep 
giving them keep thwarting expectations that's the trick mm-hmm. and the streamies now even have a category for extended uh, tv show extensions Par- right they call them companion pieces or companion something. pieces i'm right. not like a little right. clutch purse right yeah it's so pastoral I know. they're just holding hands <laughs> exactly. through the through the <laughs> through the well, fo- bring oh. along your little companion dog <laughs> yeah, bring your companion <laughs> that's what we did we right. did little companion pieces yeah, for uh, hbo come on come along kids come along you know, we're going to end the show here with uh, Brian. How you doing over there? Good over here. How's the city treating you? Uh, <laughs> the smog looks pretty good today, <laughs> I would uh, say. You no, know, yeah, it's, it's yeah. nice out here today. How um, are you doing? Yeah, you don't have allergies. I'm good. I'm hitting the, uh, hitting the um, Lakers game tonight. You are? Oh. I don't know. Is there a Lakers game tonight? There may, <laughs> not. <laughs> there, there, there may not be. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. If it's a... Uh, not the Lakers, maybe the Clippers. Yeah, right. <laughs> so what what I thought we were going to do today would be um, kind of end the show with, uh, you know, we have a few of our, you know, the best of the best or our favorite videos. This, I would say, is Brian and I's favorite quotable video because it's, it's, it's different. It's a different video. It's kind of different. It's a different one. Sometimes you want to quote one every other video and you, sometimes you could watch this video forever or just for one night it's different it's a different video so Better this be good <laughs> oh it's good it's uh wildwood new jersey oh, and good. just okay. and just so you know you know with the the hit uh jersey shore mm-hmm. this year really kind of being a social phenomena i would say oh yeah um we want to see how much has it really changed like from you know 15 years ago and uh, Good idea. and we'll come. You know, we found this video on the internet. Um, uh, I have some some facts, some good little uh, yeah. We some should information. we should mention. I've got it right here. Okay, uh, take, take it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. It was uh, created by Carol Weeks Cassidy and Ruth Leitman in 1994. The video. So yeah. So this highlights from New Jersey is kind of the highlights of that documentary. Uh, yeah. And they're really, really great. And you'll see now that if you watch the Jersey Shore or anything similar to the Jersey Shore, nothing has changed. I think they might have been inspired by this documentary. Yeah, it's it's really an, the I whole so show too. is a, is a an homage yeah. to Wildwood, New Jersey. It's great. <laughs> it's so good. So, without further ado, let's and then we can come back and uh, just wrap it up. This okay. Is Wildwood, New Jersey, 1984. 1994. Okay, the it's, Shore. It's different. All right. It's different. Enjoy. For a nice girl from New Jersey, preferably up north New Jersey, north central Newark area, be nice. Well, that's a thing with me. If everybody's got their nails done, so I have to have mine done. You gotta be with the fling, you know? You gotta do what you gotta do. But it doesn't, and they're all fake. <laughs> they are? Yeah. My car is maybe I got two, maybe I got two real ones. If you ask me, women always have a strike up on men. We've always got our bodies, if you keep them in shape. And you've always got the check to cash, no matter which way you look at it. Yes, you can come up on the boardwalk and just meet somebody like that, you know, in a split second. And, like, it can turn into a serious relationship, like me and Janet. Because, it's like, different. You know, I, I met her a couple of weeks night. ago, but we hooked up tonight together, and, like, I'm probably going to be with her for the rest of the summer. It's different every night. You and never know what's going to happen. It's different. You can stay together forever, or it's different. And whatever happens, happens. But it's different. Every night when you meet new people, it's the summer. And I think. You had no idea where it went. Like, sort of in the right direction, but not exactly. So we waited. I like smart guys and like funny guys. People with like a personality. I don't care if they're like good looking or anything. As long as they treat me right. <laughs> I care about looks. <laughs> That's all she cares about. They could, no. be, they could like kick her in the head. She won't care. Ooh, he's good looking. <laughs> I had, for instance, five girls attempt to jump me one time. And it didn't work. I haven't been in a fight for a while, and because my boyfriend won't let me fight, but I used to fight once a week, maybe. <laughs> Not anymore, She's though. In trouble a lot. Yeah, I used to get suspended all the time. I enjoyed doing it, though. <laughs> she wanted to fight me. She was a grown woman. Kids. 
she had eyebrows drawn on with a pencil. I was going to tell her to grow some eyebrows. I, was I put there. some girl in the hospital. I got arrested just for She's minutes. still in the hospital now. This happened like a week ago. What happened? We were walking down the boardwalk. She sprayed me in the eyes with mace. So, I beat her up. <laughs> I was on the go-kart cart and he <laughs> what's your name? What's your name? Every time I went by. And I didn't know what he was saying, so I just smiled back and when he got off. And then we stood outside, they came over, asked us our name. And then we've been with them for three hours. And they won't leave us for smoke. <laughs> and they're nice though. They're sweet. <laughs> I'd rather than not be with them. <laughs> Now we like them, now they're nice. And these faces too? <laughs> look at these faces, look at them. No, look, look. at these faces. Yeah, look, at, look at everybody's look at faces. faces. Aren't what they do you nice? Look at their faces. <laughs> I put some girl in the hospital and she ended up dying because she had a gun to my back and I beat her up all day. How do you ever know if you find the right person? I mean, you can get married one day. You can walk down an altar, get married. The next day, you can find a man. You should have said, oh, I should have married him. I mean, just never know. There was two people just a couple weeks ago that ended up dying because they got beat up. They were drunk. They got beat up. They passed out. And they were thrown into a pool. That was a nice piece of documentary filmmaking right there as well from 1994, Roswell, mm -hmm. New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Those kids are crazy. Good timing. Those kids are crazy. I always thought it was kind of a little more, um, I don't know, Cape Cod or something. But. You have to go back to the 20s, actually. I, I did some research, and yeah. there is a couple videos, uh, like uh, marketing videos of really? come to the carnival, the amusement, you know, yeah. the beautiful Jersey Shore, paradise at the ocean. So that's I've that's about eighty years ago. That though, I'm, you know. You yeah, no, it's it's on there. It's, well, it's up there. Well, you can probably still find. Them. I'm sure. You know, we, we should have it. we should actually point out that we should. Um, oh, the Jersey Shore thing. Yeah. Well, there's plenty of lovely. I mean, yeah. beautiful parts of Jersey Shore, and even that's true, actually. And there actually, are some yeah. lovely people there. I'm sure. <laughs> there are Jersey's, lovely people in Jersey. Jersey has nice Those pockets. Those people were lovely. Yeah, they hey, were. Short Hills. They were different. It's different. But yeah. we should put out, point out that uh, you can get the I'm full documentary if you're interested. Yeah. You can find it at RuthlessFilms.com. RuthlessFilms.com has mm -hmm. the full documentary available for purchase. Exactly. And uh, what a great filmmaker. She she still makes films. and Yeah, uh, yeah. She does a lot of things. A lot of great stuff. Mm -hmm. We hope to have her as a guest one day. That'd be cool, yeah. That'd be nice. She yeah. had good foresight there. Yeah, she did. Well, this is e Guiders Live, and I want to mention this Thursday at 9 p.m. We are going to have the B-Side Live. We're going to premiere Episode 2 of the B-Side and have our listening party. It's going to be amazing, wonderful, great. I'd also like to thank our wonderful sponsors, Blue. Blue Microphones Blue. for making us sound so good. Thank, thank you, Blue. you, Blue. Thank you, Blue. Wirecast for your lovely uh, software. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I'd like to thank Big Gravity and Livestream. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you. We're going to be on tomorrow. Thank you for watching. We'll be on again tomorrow at 4 p.m. on the nose. We're going to have some great guests, some great clips, and uh, we'll be teasing a uh, a new show that's going to be premiering uh, this Friday. It's going to be exciting. Can't wait. Can't wait. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Melissa Roth. Thank you, Mark Ostrick. Woo! Egotters! Take us out! <laughs>